You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of The Options Playbook. All right, well, we're coming to the end of earnings season. Uh, last week, we did a very simple, straightforward trade on Amazon. Talked about a long call spread that was only five points wide, which was uh, well within the expected move. And I find those on expensive underlying stocks as a very interesting way to just basically do a coin toss and say, do I think Amazon's going to beat on earnings or do I think that they are going to go down after earnings? And uh, on the call side, uh, Amazon made a strong move to the upside after the announcement. Very easy to get out of that trade uh, as soon as you put it on. So if you just waited till about noon on the day after they announced earnings, which was a Friday, then uh, you could have got out of that trade and, and made close to the maximum overall. And I would always get out. I never want on any long call spreads to try to capture that last 10 or 15 cents overall. It's never really worth the risk, especially when we were looking for, we paid a, a little little downside. We had limited and known downside and we had way more upside overall on the trade. So that was simple. It was straightforward. It was 100% speculation, 100% a coin toss and just one way to play a very expensive underlying. And then we go back a couple of weeks before that and we talked about about Apple and Apple, since it was a little less expensive underlying, we went in and uh, did a back spread. Why? Because it was feasible. We were selling one option to try to pay for two options on a lower priced underlying stock. It made it more, a more feasible trade to do that. Now this week, uh, the big stock that not actually kind of surprised that not as many people are talking about this stock. It's it's Coinbase, one of the biggest IPOs, direct to market IPOs that have have been. Well, it's the biggest actually direct market IPO, but a very, very large IPO uh, making Coinbase one of the biggest companies in the in the market, just in general, overall. Uh, and uh, nobody's really been talking about the stock, but since it's went public, it made a run up all the way up to around uh, above 400. And now today it has done nothing but go down. Well, Coinbase is expected to announce on May 13th, uh, that's when their anticipated earnings uh, are uh, for this quarter are coming out. And I do say anticipated because you're dealing with an IPO. So 
Uh, it's never set in stone whenever a company announces earnings, but uh, the option chains are showing a little bit of an increase in implied volatility going on to uh, the May 14th expiration. So let's talk about what could we do in Coinbase? Personally, when I look at the options and the option chains, I think of more volatility as opposed to less. And I'm kind of surprised to see even the front month options, the May 7th expiration. Uh, I'm looking on the Ally Invest option chains and I see the most at the money option contracts trading right around a 63% implied volatility. I go out to the next expiration, which is May 14th, which is the Friday after the announcement. And on that expiration, I see the implied volatility at about a 73% implied volatility. So that's about 10% higher than the current implied. Um, not a ton uh, relative because it's going to be such a big news event for the company, their first public announcement of earnings. So we got to do something on it. So let's look at doing a back spread. And you can lean whichever way you want. The uh, path of least resistance since they've gone public has definitely been to the downside overall. I'll put it together with calls, um, and maybe we'll even look at it with puts. I'm not going to do the same type of trade that we were looking at in Apple in that uh, we really were directional neutral with Apple. Uh, we were just really looking for the expected move. Either we wanted it to move at least the expected move to the upside or the expected move to the downside. Well, Apple actually blew out their earnings and the stock basically went nowhere. We had a little bit of a spike up in the after hours, but by the time the markets opened up the next morning, they were the stock was right back where it started before the earnings announcement. Very rare that something like that would happen in Apple, but it's obviously it's the market. It does it does whatever the market does overall. Okay, so let's look at Coinbase. The symbol is C O I N. Last trade, and I should emphasize here that we are taping Options Playbook Radio. It is Wednesday, May fifth. Last trade in Coinbase was 273 down $7.66. We're going to go out a little further in time, mainly because we can. I'm, I'm fairly surprised that these option contracts are, aren't trading at higher implied volatilities, uh, just overall being a brand new stock on the marketplace. So the May 14th expiration is nine days away. And we're not going to use that one because we're going to look at a volatility backspread. Now, I'm, I might do this next week. I might wait until Monday or Tuesday or even Wednesday of next week, which that's when we usually tape options, play, playbook radio. But we'll be able to look at this trade overall. So we're going to put this trade together today, and we're going to discuss the thoughts that are behind it because – some of the big things that we've talked about in the last few episodes about trades around earnings um, all have to do with the underlying stock and the conditions of the option contracts, the pricing conditions. So we approached Amazon differently than we did Apple because of the volatility in Amazon and also the actual value of Amazon versus Apple that changes your outlook and your strategy overall. Here in this instance with Coinbase, it's not an outrageous stock. It is expensive, more expensive than most overall. But the fact that it's still trading around $275 means that the prices of the option contracts aren't insanely crazy, right? If we look at the May 14th expiration, the expiration that contains that earnings, the most at-the-money option contracts would be the 275 strike call and the 275 strike put. I'm just going to round off a little bit here, but basically that call is trading for around 12 bucks, and that puts trading for around 13 bucks. Right, right, basically at the midpoint. So we're talking uh, it's, it's feasible to buy one outright. And maybe you think about doing that uh, in, in Coinbase overall. If you want to just take a speculative bet, you could go a little bit out of the money. You could just buy a call option. Maybe you could spread it. We're going to do a back spread, though. So with that said, knowing that we're talking about about a 24, 25 point move is the expected move. 
Um, uh, it, it's definitely nothing to sneeze at. Uh, 25 points on a $273 stock is almost a 10% move. But this stock has gone all the way from 400 all the way down to 273 which is, yeah, I'm just expecting more of a move than less. Uh, we actually talked on option on the stock play of the day. You can go back three or four weeks ago now, and we did talk about a long strangle in Coinbase when the stock was at 320-ish, and I'm paraphrasing here um, from my memory. But overall, yeah, that, that obviously worked out at that point in time with the stock now down at 273. So we looked at an out-of-the-money strangle, and there's not that many underlying stocks that I would consider buying two out-of-the-money option contracts on. But I go back to the point that I that I just I'm just really surprised to see Coinbase trading at this level of volatility, especially with an anticipated earnings announcement. So we're going to go out an extra week. Uh, May 14th expiration uh, would be too quick for me. They're going to announce on the 13th, uh, the next day, the uh, option contracts would die. Maybe we'll look at a butterfly next week. Maybe we'll do a rinse and repeat and we'll look at two different strategies because the fact that they announce on the 13th, which is a Thursday, uh, is just like an Amazon situation where they announce on Thursday and you got some option tra- contracts that only have one day to live. And that always makes butterflies interesting overall. But today we're going to look at the back spread and we're going to do it with calls. And I'm going to go a little bit out of the money. If I was good, with this instance, because I do think the potential for the move is greater than expected. Uh, I mean, I this thing could, could go to go to 100 or it could go all the way back up to 400. It's it's made that type of move in a few weeks' time. I don't know why after earnings it couldn't make a very strong move once again. So I'm going to go a little bit out of the money, and it makes it a little bit more speculative because we're going to need a, a, a little bit bigger move in order to accomplish our goals. We're going to sell the at-the-money option. We're going to sell the uh, 275 strike call. That's trading at a 64% implied volatility. The expiration is the May 21st expiration, 16 days away. So it's going to have a week to live after the earnings announcement approximately. And then we are selling that option contract. The midpoint on that is right around $14. So we are just going to go out until we see uh, an option contract that we can buy and we can buy two of them and get those paid for. So if I go and look at the 29750 call option, that is 610 by 660. So in that instance, the midpoint of that would be 635. So that's about the midpoint. We're ho- hoping to buy two of those and we can do that. And so if we are incorrect in our forecast and the market goes straight down, we're bringing in a net credit and that's what we'd look to make if the market made a strong move to the downside. On the upside though, that means that we need it to move at least that expected move. So from 275 with, which is the at the money option contract, all the way up to our short strike of 297.50, we're talking about a 22 point move. So this isn't for the faint of heart. If you're doing this trade and you are going to ideally get out of it, usually the day after or maybe the Monday after that announcement, you're going to be thinking, you got to think this thing can make at least a 40 point move. So you want a 40-point move to the upside, if not more. And if you don't think that that is possible, well, then I don't want you to do this trade. And it's never meant to be a recommendation here on Options uh, Playbook Radio. We're just trying to learn here. But this will be a fun paper trade to do overall. But if I'm doing this, the width of the spread, the ideal situation with a back spread is that we are going to sell – Uh, a call spread to pay for an extra call. So that's really what we're doing by doing this trade overall. And so it is a one by two ratio. Some people have referred to it as a pay later call in that you're doing this for a net credit to the account. And if you are incorrect and the stock just makes, uh, a, a well, it just makes almost the expected move up to the 
to uh, 97.50 strike, if it makes that 22 and a half point move, well, you end up paying later for that extra call. And that's really what it all comes down to overall. So you will have a margin requirement that's in the account in order to do this trade. Uh, net credit of $1.20 to the account to put this on. So your maximum risk is that twenty two fifty. You need two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars to put this trade on. Now, one of the things is that that only happens if the underlying stock goes out right at two ninety seven fifty at expiration. So it is a trade that you're going to want to react to very quickly. And we could even get out of this trade before of earnings. So by the fact that we're doing it this week, if we got a twenty point move to the upside just in general on this trade or uh, or even more, well, this trade could be trading, uh, be, could be profitable before we even get going uh, with that earnings report here. So definitely a, a speculative trade, and I want to emphasize that, but there's a lot of weird stuff that's going on in this underlying stock. I mean, another thing that's kind of odd about Coinbase to, to point out is that as you go further and further out of the money on the call side, implied volatilities increase quite a bit. So this there isn't really the skewing on the call side as opposed to on the put side. So if you want to do it on the put side, there's really nothing that's stopping you from doing this type of trade on the put side either, just because of the way the skewing is overall in the option contracts. So just a lot of interesting things with this underlying stock. It seems very odd. So we have all these cryptocurrencies that are, are going all over the place, but the exchange that is actually trading these cryptocurrencies and benefits from the trading of all the different currencies that they have on their exchange overall um, just seems to be in a tepid volatility place. It, I'm not saying that 65% implied volatility on this May 21st expiration is a low implied volatility, but it's just not as much as one may expect on a brand new stock that's going to be announcing earnings for their very first time. All right, so let's surmise this. Let's see exactly where our butterfly, or I'm sorry, our, our back spread is trading for right now. Here's the trade. Uh, we're, gonna, we're taping options of Playbook Radio. Can emphasize again, it's Wednesday, May 5th. The markets are closed. Coinbase last traded today right at 273. Uh, the underlying stock was down $7.66. We're going to go out to that May 21st expiration and we're going to buy two of the 297.50 calls. And at the same time, we're going to be selling one of that same expiration 275 calls. We're going to do this for a net credit of 120 to the account. If the market goes down, that's the maximum we could make is that net credit. All the options would expire worthless. We can make that net credit. On the upside, we're gonna have a fairly decent sized margin requirement because if the underlying stock stopped right at our strike price of our long option contracts at 297.50, we would be down 22.50 on that trade on that expiration date. So that is going to be your margin requirement. We have unlimited upside potential, though. If the underlying stock does run up uh, past earnings and has a huge gap up to the upside, we participate because we are long one more call option than we are short. So definitely an interesting trade overall. And that's going to be it for this edition edition of Options Playbook Radio. We'll be back next week on Wednesday before the announcement. We'll maybe look at another Coinbase trade just because this underlying stock has really sparked my interest in general uh, just because of the way that it's traded and the way the option prices or the options are pricing out after their IPO. So that is it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have a topic you'd like us to discuss on the show or a question you'd like us to answer in the program, you can send them directly to me at theoptionsguy at invest.li.com. Please follow me on Twitter for all of the educational events that we do uh, at Ally Invest. My handle is at Brian Overby. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at the same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you've sold finished out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. 
Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.